Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are, or even if you're watching a recording. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jeff Fritz, and this is my live stream. I like to call it Fritz and Friends. And uh, I'm wearing my Philadelphia Fusion hat today because I don't know if you follow Overwatch. If you follow competitive Overwatch out there, but Fusion University in the Contender Series, undefeated in the season, champions in North America, third year in a row, undefeated, unreal, just cleaning up and demolishing things out there. So happy to hear that and have at least a Philadelphia team win this weekend. I've got a guest today. Let's make sure, let's bring him on here. I'm going to unmute him and get him over here. It's Brady Gaster. Hey, Brady. Good morning and afternoon and evening, everybody. How's it going? All right. got to tune you up there. You're a little quiet. Oh, sorry. Mic is up. There we go. Check. 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 Oh, yeah. You're good. Better? Yeah. Cool. I think so. How's it um, going, everybody? Hey there. So we've been doing a bit of talking recently. Oh, gosh, you should introduce yourself to folks first in case they don't know sure. the Brady Gaster. Help that coming. <laughs> uh, my name is, again, Brady Gaster. Um, I work on uh, the ASP.NET core team. Uh, I report to Damien. I work with Glenn and David and all those awesome fellows. Um, IPM, the product you know and love, as SignalR, and I work with our good buddy Glenn on all things related to microservices and all the kinds of good stuff we do on the back end. So that's me. So Brady has some unique and interesting insight into some things that we've been working on recently, particularly around WebSockets. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk a little bit about WebSockets. We're going to do a little bit of work here on our Elgato Stream Deck library. Uh, I want to say hello to some of the folks in the chat room there. SNB's here. Carrie Payette's back. Hey, good morning. Developer's Garage. I love code. Hugo is back. Still coffee. Oh, it's absolutely G Fuel for me. Are you kidding? I got the black on Blackberry over here. I've got the mountaintop. We're halfway there. I'm going with my uh, my national drink of Seattle today with coffee. There you go. I have to travel about 13 hours. 13 hours. Where are you headed, Brady? Well, I'm leaving uh, Seattle, and I'm flying to Iceland um, with uh, Chris Anderson from the Cosmos DB team. And then we're going to leave there and uh, fly to Oslo, and then we'll leave Oslo and fly to Finland. And we'll be in Finland speaking at IgluConf. IgluConf. So IgluConf. So if you're interested, I think day one's going to be broadcast. So it's IgluConf.fi. Okay, cool. <laughs> So, um, all right, there's everybody in chat room. So, uh, so we've been doing a little bit of work on the Elgato Stream Deck. You've got a Stream Deck. My gosh, the first time that we did a stream together for .NET Conf, I had my Stream Deck with me, and it was like, it was like Nirvana, like four people. There it is. Brady, the real time rock star. <laughs> CJ Al Aliaga, thank you so much for that subscription. Um. I appreciate that with your Twitch Prime, and we'll we'll make a matching donation to Black Girls Code. So awesome! Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, sounds cold. Says I love code. Yeah, I hope you're going to dress warm there. <laughs> and in uh, Finland. In Finland. So yeah. when we did a uh, when we did .NET Conf, uh, <laughs> we shared the Stream Deck. We passed it around. Everybody was in love with this device. You grabbed one, James Montemagno grabbed one, Imo Landworth grabbed one, the Channel 9 folks got a couple. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've been thrilled with it, this device and, and the flexibility of it to do mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And the past few episodes here, we've been writing some code and extending the <coughs> API, the SDK that they gave us with version 4 of their, uh, of their mm -hmm. application so that we, we can take that WebSocket integration that they give us and make it something more for .NET developers who want to program C Sharp, F Sharp, uh -huh. VB, and use uh -huh. .NET Core so it works on Windows and Mac. Uh -huh. um, so I, Brady, I don't, I don't know if I, I know I've shared this with you, but I think we have to share with our, our friends there in the audience. Um, the folks at Elgato, Elgato was acquired by Corsair, so Elgato and Corsair. Uh -huh. Have, have been watching a little bit of what we've been doing. They've seen some of the steps that we've taken with this library. And they want to work with us to make 
our Stream Deck library, the official .NET library for folks who want to build with the Stream Deck. That is so cool. I so am cool. so thrilled with that. Let's, yeah, a little bit of applause for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. So, so cool. So, yeah, look at the cheer there in the uh, chat room. Fantastic. Amazing news. So, mm -hmm. I thought it was only appropriate if we talk about the, the latest pull request we got here, and then let's package up and put a first deployment of our template and our uh, and our library out there on Azure, using the Azure DevOps, and push it into NuGet. What do you think? It's great. Fantastic. I love the fact that you just got a template. That's fantastic. I've been working on a couple of different template ideas with Glenn. Yeah. Whoever whoever did that work to create a template for you is a uh, get a golf clap from me. It's not yeah. not not small potatoes. It's good not stuff. small potatoes yeah. at all. And it, awesome. it needs a little bit more. Oh my gosh, we who cheered there, Mr. Magoo with the hundred bits. Thank you so much for that kind cheer. We'll mm -hmm. make a matching donation to Black Girls Code. Thank you so much. Um. All right, let's get over to the code, and mm -hmm. let's start talking about this. I've got an empty screen above me, um, and we got we got a pull request. If you don't mind, we take a look at this pull request real quick. Um, I'm this one. I think is important for us to merge before <clears throat> we start deploying things, and it's from uh, from our friend in, in the chat room, Admiral Snyder. And uh, I was talking to Admiral Snyder over Discord. We have a Discord server if you want to chat about any of the projects or ask questions offline. Um, and Admiral took all the features, all the things that we had inside of um, inside of our command line that were part of the template to capture uh, all the command line arguments and things and stuff those instead into the connection manager so that you don't have to have a command line application that you configure that captures all those things and passes them in. It just does it for you. And he also put together um, a couple other PowerShell scripts to help with closing and restarting the Stream Deck to help automate some of that process that Carrie helped us with with her pull request last time. So I think this looks really good. Look at that. Compliments from Carrie. Awesome PR. I thought this was a great one, too. Um, mm -hmm. that, that really takes, when you look at the command line sample plugin that we were kind of using as our boilerplate, you know, what does it look like to actually use the library? Um, we wrote all this boilerplate code that we would have to repeat in every plugin to say, well, here's the command line arguments and then pass it in and set up the logger factory and all this goo in here that was just annoying He's really simplified down and passed that information over into our library. Hmm. So then cool. it becomes so much simpler, and you just have to name your plugin here. That's not bad at all. Hey, could, hey, could you scroll up real quick? Because sure. I'd like to see the beginning part of that. I've never seen this library. It's pretty awesome. Uh, well, wait, go back to uh, go, 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 stop. So, so these, these options here? Yes. Go up real quick. Does that class inherit from something? I'm just nope. Curious. That's just a normal class. So oh, it, cool. it's a public static void main, and it mm -hmm. executes. It, it calls into this command line application library and says execute async, and this is the real input uh, entry point. And by passing in the arguments to it, that execute async method parses out all of the command line mm -hmm. arguments and sticks them into appropriate properties. Yep, that's cool. I like it. Yeah. So, uh, Janescu says Brady will be igloo fied soon. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. On the way. On the way. I hope. I hope the. I hope the, the air traffic people can get me there safely and whatnot. Considering there's not as many of them. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh gosh. Let me. I've got a little problem there with the height of our chat room in the video. Let's see if we can clean that up a little. Uh, as part of the template, should they be able to re replace the class name in program CS? That's what I was thinking. Yeah, something like that. That's the class name. The, the the program class name or um, the name of their plugin? I guess you could call it whatever you want. 
up there. Like it doesn't have to be program. Hugo, like, like you could you could put the plugin in a different class theoretically. Like, sure, sure. And the plugin okay. is in a different class. the The question is around the name of the plugin. This right here. Right. That's not bad. Uh, I okay. I like the the idea of that. Can't wait until the main product we use at work supports core says I love code. Yeah, .NET Core is it, it's the bee's knees. Pretty awesome. Um, so we've got a launch settings for the sample plugin to help with the the um, that inner loop, right? So profile mm -hmm. sample plugin uh, command name executable. It runs command, and then it it actually relaunches the stream deck. Hmm. Should we load the plugin dynamically? I don't think you can load the plugin dynamically. I think the, you can in the context of the device, yeah. Right. Um, I mean, you could probably write your own libraries that you would stick next to it, but it's like, why just do configuration at that point? Right. The, so let me come back to that in just a second. Register plugin and start the stream deck. I'm not sure what the difference is here in this PowerShell script compared to the one that Carrie gave us because this identifies that where the stream deck is uh, gets the plugin name from the path. Okay. Manifest content. It looks at the manifest for the um, for the plugin, right? And we have the, the stream deck specifies we have this manifest JSON. And it's going to take a look at that. Convert from JSON. Go get the content. There's a UUID. This is our universally unique identifier that we're going to do. Um, we're going to use to identify our plugin. Grab the plugin ID, blah, blah, blah. Destination directory is our app data folder under plugins. Okay. Bin directory is, <clears throat> and we're going to compile for Windows 10 right now. We're going to want to change that at some point to also compile for Mac. Coming soon. We'll figure that one out when we, minimum viable, we'll get there. Uh, current working directory, copying files. So this actually does the deploy to the appropriate folder. Gets the child item. I'm not sure what this is doing. Don't copy the VS folder. Okay. Restart the stream deck. Uh, why isn't it? So I would need to. I'd need to install the cross plat PowerShell tools to be able to do this if I wanted to do this on my Mac. Right. So mm. may, so right. So maybe we also need a Bash script to run here yep. as well. I would say so. Um, the CS proj the, for the sample plugin has an on build success post build event. Remove the command line utilities, and um, instead of debug file copy, copy is calling register plugin and start stream deck. Hmm. I just want to make sure none of these calls. I mean, this is all PowerShell that's within this particular repo. You can emulate this in a bash script pretty easily. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't, I just, I'm, I want to look at it when I pull it down later and yes, or, or cake. Or cake. That'd be good. Sure. Too. Yeah, cake would be great. Um, I haven't learned cake. There's a great opportunity. So he removed debug file copy, which, mm -hmm. um, it really, honestly, it, it's more of a rename from debug file copy into this. A lot of the same things are in there to so register plugin and start stream deck. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's in our canonical sample of the command line. Right, base stream deck plugin. Th this is nice. Took all of my public virtual task methods here that just return task completed and just turned it into a one line gimmick here. So, mm. okay, that's that's a little bit right, more terse, a little bit clearer exactly what it's doing. Just got the stream notification, says Gareth. That's weird it took so long, but welcome. Thanks for joining us, Gareth. So, the connection manager now, this is where, right, we move those things, right? It's receiving the command line arguments and a logger factory. And then here's where it's actually saying, all right, create a new command line app application and actually go grab the options and save them out here. So these options, if, you, if you're not familiar how, with how to write a plugin for the Stream Deck, you, there's two main ways you can do it. You can build a compiled application or you can write a web page that listens with some JavaScript. Uh, listening with some JavaScript doesn't give you quite the flexibility of what we're trying to accomplish. We want to be able to write mm -hmm. with C Sharp and do some cool things. Mm -hmm. So when the executable is started, you get passed in. Well, here's the port the software is listening on. And uh, a UUID for the software, a register event, which is just a block of text you need to send back to say, yes, I'm here. 
and then a block of information about the about the device. So it's going to initialize and then bring back that information and the initialize is being passed in all of the values that were captured. And then yep. we go off and do all of our interaction with the device. And the rest of this is just a bunch of lines that are being cleared out and moved around. No big I mean, deal here. It's cool how if we're reaching out and we're talking to a WebSocket. So we sat in the team room last night about this. They're like, are you running a WebSocket server on the device? It's like, yeah, I think so. It's kind of cool. It's not on um, the device? It's not on the device. It's like bouncing up to a cloud service somewhere and then bouncing back down? Or No, it's inside. Oh, this is it. Yeah, it's yeah, inside okay, okay, the, okay. the controller app that you run on your on your machine that drives the content that's on the device. Hey, Mike uh, Jolly, yeah. welcome. That's cool. Yeah. The, o- the only complaint I have about the app is it doesn't show up in my task bar. It's a little weird. It, so it doesn't show up in the task bar. It actually, actually only shows up over here in the tray. Yeah. Um, I've pinned it here because I start and stop it so much but as we've been building here. Mm-hmm. So it feels kind of weird. To, to constantly have to go find <clears throat> it and start and go click through it. So, um, it's a great little app. I mean, you don't see apps like condense this this effectively. It's it's great. Like you look at it, you know exactly how to use it. It's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. So I really like what's here. I'm going to merge this. Okay. Cool. I, I don't see anything significantly wrong here. Hey, Svava. Yes. we're Oh, Brady and I are going to have all kinds of mischief today. It's going to be fun. So I am going to merge this. This looks really good. Um, I even commented; it's a phenomenal pull request. So uh, I'm going to. Where's conf- your like golf clap sound? Do you have a golf clap sound? I do have a golf clap sound, but it's on the <clears throat> same channel as you. So if I play it, it's going to be really loud and drown you out. <laughs> mm, that's okay. <laughs> so um, it, it would sound like the team room. That's good. Yeah. Merged. Thank you very much for this. Update. Now, these are updates not to the template, but to the library and to um, and to our canonical example that we have here. So let me go grab a copy of that and bring it down locally here. And I think I think we can um, start talking about updating the the library. And then let's uh, let's get ready and deploy. Golf Club, who are you? Carl and Richard? Uh, Gareth? It's an, it's an honor to even be joked like that. It's cool. Yeah, cool. right? That, that's a compliment, kind I'll of. Take that. But I, it's not quite a golf clap. It's more of an applause that I have. I've got other sound effects that we can use to just, yeah, get crazy later. I, I kind of miss the sound effects. That's you sorry. miss the sound effects? I mean, I mean wow. like I said, you use them more tastefully than other streamers. Oh, is that so? You won't be able to hear them because if I share my system sound back to you, you're also going to get yourself. You don't want to hear that. Yeah, that's right. Um, I hear that guy all the time. I don't need to. <laughs> the plugin is in, if the plugin was in a DLL assembly and the console was a generic host that loaded the plugin assembly, pass it to the connection manager. Um, that's interesting, Code Therapist. Because then we could actually <clears throat> like have a community of plugins for the app itself. So there is a right, right. There is a custom plugins thing that you see down here, and when you click more oh. actions, they're actually building out this um, library that you're going to be able to connect out to and search and get plugins for your stream deck. Um, the the challenge that I see is you need to have one of these EXEs for each collection of plugins. So if I download and install one of these plugins, I could have multiple actions in it, right? Yeah. So right now there's, right, an action is one of these things that I can drag onto a button. So a plugin could contain multiple ones of those. If I allow multiple DLLs there and I just load whatever DLLs in the folder, while mm-hmm. very flexible, not practical for packaging and deployment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. That's true. So I, I I like the idea as if if I had full control of the ecosystem, but I don't. At the point after I after I package the plugin, I, I don't know what it is. Could be uh could the plugin be a global .NET tool? 
you you would want to call a .NET tool from within the Stream Deck. Well, check this out. The Stream Deck has Ooh. always had this capability. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this, Brady, where I can just say open and mm -hmm. specify an application for it to run. So I can run scripts from right here, and that's you can do .NET new from your Elgato. That's hot. You could run that's .NET cool. test from your Elgato. Can we set up type typing macros? Like we take this puppy on stage and we have demo one code, demo two code, demo three code, and it could actually like inject text into like whatever actual document we've got. That would be cool. Oh, cool. Oh, there you go. Okay, good. I like it. Do it. Boom. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. You could put code samples behind one of these. Expect to see that. <laughs> so now that uh, I kind of hinted at at a, a feature that I that is what I wanted to build when I first heard about this capability with the Stream Deck to be able to build features onto this. So what I want to get to after we package and deploy this, right? And there's some of my sound effects. Lightning, Brady, better be careful. Gets a little. Um, I would like to be able to build a plugin that sits here that not just runs my .NET tests, but also turns red or green, even does a .NET watch on the, on the tests, but, but have the button turn red or green based on whether it passed or failed the tests. Mm -hmm. If it failed or passed, tell me how many tests failed mm -hmm. and how many tests were ignored and how many tests passed. That's that's cool. Um, I think I told you this idea before. For those of you that like look at um, look at uh, coding horror or watch Jeff's uh, Twitter stream, or who had a Texas Instruments 994A back in the day, um, there's a cool little game called Hunt the Wumpus, and mm -hmm. the idea behind it is like you move from square to square. I would love to like design logos for each one of these little buttons and actually like make Hunt the Wumpus on here. Oh. And then like if you could go into like go into there, it goes into a deeper hole, et cetera, et cetera. That's the idea that I had when you and I first started talking about partying on the Logato um, last summer, I believe. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that'd be fun. So let me let me reopen the solution. Oh, I love the MS build interaction. Definitely it's got a good idea there. That's cool. How about this one? Re check out what uh, Carrie has. She added buttons to automate her developer experience. Projects, oh, buttons, hot. timers, source control. So using that's the Stream cool. Deck, think about this as mm -hmm. an external keyboard that automates all those stupid tasks that you mm -hmm. as a developer, you, right? There's hotkeys to do these things. But if it's just right there, right? So if I open, I don't know, let me open a file, right? Well, the, the first person who actually told me about this, this is where I have to take some thunder away from you, um, wasn't you. You're the first person to show me how to use it for streaming. But um, uh, Larry Larson, one of the uh, Channel 9 guys, um, he has this thing on his desk at home for using with Premiere. And he described the way he's got his macros set up for Premiere, and it's like he can't live without it. So I can mm -hmm. imagine if he got used to the same thing in a coding capacity. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe we could even like share, share libraries where, like, you know, oh, here's the... VS Code uh, Elgato pack, you know what I mean? And you could like load it into button three. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that could be new. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, and there's, there's, so folks are saying, oh my gosh, I got to buy a stre uh, stream deck. Listen, you got to buy it. Let's go buy one. Th there's two different we'll stream decks. Break. There's, there's one that's six buttons and there's one that's 15 buttons. I'm using the one with 15 buttons. Trust me on this. The six button one is nice. It's small, it's nice and portable, it carry it around. But the full size stream deck, right? There it is. You want the buttons. You you need the buttons. You gotta have the buttons. Um and here, let me hold up a here's a standard size Rubik's Cube for size. Okay. Here's the It's it fits nicely. Oh my gosh, Brady, we're getting raided by Dr. WD-40. 19 folks are joining us right now from Dr. WD-40. Science raid! Oh no, Professor Melko. Science raid. Run! Wow. I love it. Welcome raiders. Uh, my name is Jeff Fritz. And we're... Uh, I'm going to cut off Mario there. Um... And we are, you hold the line. Yes, defend. Get out those .NET bots. 
Um, Frank ordered one. It's out for delivery. Oh, my gosh. Um, Raiders, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a live coder here. We're writing some code today. When we're working with the Elgato Stream Deck, you can see the app running there on screen. This is what my Stream Deck looks like right now. I'll show you on camera real quick. There it is. Um, we're building a plugin model for this, a toolkit using .NET. The Stream Deck has a plugin SDK available, a uh, whole plugin uh, ecosystem that you can start working with. Brady, my colleague Brady and I, we are working on a C Sharp library and toolkit that will allow you to use .NET and .NET Core technologies to work with the Stream Deck. Very, very cool stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Dr. WD40, I really appreciate the raid. That's, uh, that's tremendous. That's like only the third or fourth raid that I've gotten here. Um... Thank you so much. Make sure you check out Dr. WD40, those of you who haven't, uh, who didn't come over on the raid. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. I do not have a discount code, Mr. Magoo, for the uh, for the stream deck. Yes, there's there's been rumors of a 30-button stream deck, and it's they, they haven't <gasps> made it. There have been rumors. Somebody photoshopped one together. It would be tremendous. I would be first in line at the local Best Buy to get one. It would be phenomenal. Uh, morning raids are tough to get. You're right, Dr. WD-40. They are very tough. Um, Professor Melko, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. I'm still working on my Rainbow Beard Challenge here. I am at 4,860 followers, Brady. When I get to 5,000, I'm dying this beard rainbow colored dude. Wait, wait, I don't, wait, is it? Go ahead. Hang on. No, I, I thought ahead. it was like in a certain amount of time. It was. It rainbow I was guaranteeing that I would do it. It was going to be, if I got 5,000 before Ignite, I was going to die it at Ignite and wear See, it for I think Ignite. the ante has to get up. Well, hang on. So we missed that goal. And we said, all right, if we can get it for Dev Intersection in December and Connect, yes, I would wear a rainbow beard with all of the Scots at Connect. That's good. Okay. And now? It's, it's and now it's, it's all right. I, I'll still do it, but I'll do it here at home on stream. But uh, we're not there. Didn't get there yet. So forty eight sixty is where we're at. One hundred and forty to go. Yeah. So uh, I love code. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, uh, of course we'll archive off the video a little bit later, and it'll be over on YouTube later today. Um, there's there's, there's got to be a bigger event in person. In person, like like when you're leading a workshop or something, that we, we could actually have you in person, that people could selfie with you in the beard. That's, that's so cool. build is coming up in the spring time frame. MVP summit is in March. Yeah, you're right, Frank. So there's a couple different things coming up that we could consider. I, I, just, I just I don't think you can hide the rainbow in the in the crypt. You have to bring it out. Let it breathe. <laughs> Let it breathe. Uh, Mikachu, thanks for the follow. Carrie Payette, thank you so much for that kind cheer. 401 bits. We'll make a kind donation to, a matching donation to uh, Black Girls Code this month. Thank you so much for that. Blue Lava is here. Hey, Blue Lava. Yeah, bump up that number of followers by about 140 and we'll, uh, we'll do some things. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> thanks for tuning in, Blue Lava. I really appreciate you. Uh, joining us this morning. So, um, so Brady, I pulled down that, that code. Let me share with you. I'm going to use LiveShare with Brady. This is Visual Studio LiveShare. If you haven't used this before, and I'm going to sign in with my GitHub account, what you can do using Visual Studio 2017 or Visual Studio Code is you can actually share um, your code and your development process with other folks that you want to collaborate with. So I just sent Brady over a, a code, a special URL that he can use to log in. Now, I'm using Visual Studio 2017. Brady, I know you're on a Mac, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. Brady can use Visual Studio Code and the Mac to connect in and collaborate with me here on Windows. There you go. Guest join. There's Brady Gaster right up top. Mm -hmm. And you'll see his initials here. And there's a little tape flag. And just like if you were using... Uh, Word Online, Microsoft Word Online, or using Google Docs, where you have that integrated experience and you can see other people working just like right there. 
you're able to collaborate. And those folks on LiveShare also get IntelliSense, right? So they get the code completion capabilities. They get some of the refactoring capabilities. And they get all of the features that they prefer when they write code. Things like uh, font size, theme. Maybe the, maybe Brady doesn't like the dark theme that I have here or doesn't like the font I'm using. I wants to use Comic Sans because I know Brady. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can choose to use that, and it doesn't impact me. Very cool stuff. Super handy tool this semester. Oh, yeah, check it out, Mikachu. It is really, really cool. And it's completely free to use. So check it out. And you don't have to be using .NET. You can do this with JavaScript, with C++, uh, with Java, uh, Go. We've seen people use Rust, all kinds of languages. And it's phenomenal. Comic Sans coding and Blue Lava is shaking his head. Yeah, I know. Now, think if Brady were able to get followers to this channel. Oh, Janesco. I mean, you have to get, you have to be, you know, I have to get on the channel first. <laughs> that, that, that experience that I had in my office, I just haven't been doing it. So I have to get back on my uh, MIDI devices and do some live streaming again. There you go. So I'm going to, I'm going to put a quick uh, bit of, of cheer graffiti right here in the sample plugin to thank our friend Carrie Payette there. That is 401 mm-hmm. from C Payette. And today is the 15th. Thank you so much. We'll record that. I spelled Payette wrong. <gasps> there we go. Um, and I can't blame autocorrect for that one. Um, oh, no. My my chat on the Twitch dashboard just went blank. There it goes. All right. That's a little bit better. Uh, how do you access it again? I want to write it down. Three group projects this semester. So I'll, I'll show you how to do this, make it true. If you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, it's an extension that you can install. So in Visual Studio, if I go Tools, Extensions, there it is, VS Live Share. It's also available under the same name for Visual Studio Code. Just go into Extensions and choose oh. VS Live Share, and you can put as many as five people together, um, read, write, and be able to collaborate. You can also do that. You can also extend it. There's an option... Um, that you can choose with LiveShare to um, push out the number of folks. Uh, where is it? To increase guest limit. And you can push that out. It's an experimental feature you have to turn on, but you can push it out as high as 30 people. And it does come built into 2019. So, mm-hmm. very cool stuff. All right. So, um, we have... A couple things here, and then the template is sitting out in in a folder over here. Let me just show the template. Um, But I want to do the packaging around the library. Now, the template isn't going to work right away with the library because the template's built using the old capabilities. Oh, another thing. Let me make sure I call this out, Brady. Um, I renamed the project from Stream Deck first to Stream Deck Toolkit in GitHub. Got it. So anybody that's looking for that, that's where you can find it. Um, okay. So the template, it's got a new spec and it's got some content here that just kind of looks, right? Why am I zooming in Explorer? That's lame. Anyways, um, but it's got some default icons here that we grabbed from the counter. I think we should change these at some point so they're a little bit more default and generic, like boxes or something or you know, something to indicate that it's just the default and not this counter image. I appreciate that they were just copied over there, but they're not a, a default. They still hint at the counter sample that we started with. You know what I mean, buddy? Yeah, I do. I do. I think that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, I think that's our friend Matt Auerbach from, from Twitch who just joined us. Thanks so much, Matt, for the follow. I appreciate that. Forty. That should be 4863 now. There we go. Nice. Cool. Love seeing that. It, it ticked up Can over here. Can I see these? Get, I might have to get, uh, get my icon creator hat on for a little while. Come up with some stuff. Yeah, right? It, icons are, are an easy way if somebody wants to send a pull request and, and uh, get a little bit of credit for that. If you look at the yeah. ticker up, up at the top, I actually give folks credit on top of the screen there. Let me refresh it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, no, I was, I was more looking at these. I, I'm, one, one thing I saw is I think there's a Node library. There's a 
when you and I started this Algato stuff, one, there, I was looking at the different node libraries at first, mm. and one of them actually has an interesting thing where you can set an image and then set an overlay text on it. I don't know how fast that works, but I, I bet you could do some interesting stuff with that. So there actually is a feature that they give you here where, yeah. right, you can say create new icon, and it opens a web page, and huh? you can compose and build an icon oh, that's pretty cool. for your button here. Ben Weens, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, so these are nice buttons for an end user to configure on mm. on the, the Stream Deck. But those default actions, what the default button should look like, I feel like that's something we should give something that's plain and simple and encourages someone yeah. to change it. I agree with that. So, uh, yeah, the observer's right. You can customize this, set colors and all kinds of things, and then download it. Really neat. What you're saying is you don't want to give them a bunch of .NET bots because then everybody will just have a bunch of .NET bot buttons. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I don't want to, I, I don't want to focus on packaging up the template yet, but I wanted to work with you on packaging the the .NET standard library. So the okay. library here, let me just show the properties real quick. This is .NET standard 2.0. That means it's compatible to work with uh, ASP.NET. I'm sorry, .NET Core and .NET Framework. And will run on uh, uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux, or even on Xamarin, depending on how mm -hmm. it's compiled. Which would be weird if somebody tried to run a Stream Deck plugin on Xamarin. Maybe yeah. that could be a thing. I don't know. That we could make the icon in Apple Core, says Carrie. That'd be fun. Sure. That'd be super, super abstract and weird. Super abstract and weird, but possible. Possible. But possible. And that means it should be done. Yeah. Okay, so I have I have the library here. Now, if we want to package this up so that it's available for folks to be able to use, I feel like I need a new spec to go with this, right? Mm-hmm. That'd be good. Um, and I'm completely... I remember, I'm completely... I can't remember the command. There's a command. There's a command that generate new. one, isn't there? I think you can dot net new it. I thought so, too. Um, so, not dit net. Dot net... New. Done that before too. Uh -huh. New get config. I thought you could .NET new a new spec, and I don't see one here. Nor I. Or is it? Can you do .NET new get? Um, locals push. So don't we? I think we we prefer a new spec for building this package. Um, I know we can. I know we can package, right? We can actually. What? Why am I doing it in this console? Check this out, everybody. Um, I'm going to open Whack Whack Terminal. I know Whack Whack Terminal. What the heck is that? So this is a plugin, right? Uh, not. I don't want the thing down there. I should be able to. Yeah. View other windows. Control backslash backslash. And sharing this terminal, Brady should be able to get into this and execute commands as well. There it is. Windows PowerShell. It's starting up now. Hey, okay, there's well, Admiral Snyder. Welcome. Am I going to do this in VS Code? Or it would what? be in VS Code. Okay. There it is. So now you should be able to see my command line over on your machine. I don't see it right now, no. see it not you see it not you control back tick and it doesn't pop in there dude control back tick control no i mean i see i see the terminal i see my terminal i just don't see you typing in it let me see is it sharing share terminal here we go let's try that one now i just closed on my terminal well we're about to open it up on you oh there it goes that's cool i like it so for those of you that might be working with Node or some other language where working at the command line is really important, right? Now you can also share your command line back and forth when you collaborate on that. Yeah, command that back is, tick. That's the one I'm thinking that of. Is, that is good times. I love that. Yeah. So, all right. Try and run that .NET pack from, well, let me go into that Streamlib folder, right? 
Stream lib. I don't think you can do it with .NET Pack. I think I actually had a um, I had a new spec. So uh, Code Therapist is asking why we need this new spec thing. Um, effectively, what we want to do is we want to package this this up as a NuGet package, like an npm package. Yeah. Um, and put it out there so that you could uh, bring it down and use it in your own projects and like make your own creations and whatnot. Um, so the new spec is actually a file that drives it. You can generate it from your CS proj, but in a lot of cases, uh, with, like with me, I still use a new spec file for these things. So there we go. I just I ran .NET pack, and we've got a a package, yep. but the version number that's in it is 1.0. <laughs> It's probably reading from your uh, project, uh, from your uh, project file. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, Dweedle, thanks so much for the follow. Well, the version numbers. Where do we set the version numbers now with .NET Core? I looked in your project file. I don't see it in there. Um, that might be an assumption it's making. It's an MS it's build sure. version property. Yeah. Okay. So if we e same. edit the project file. Yeah, and given a specific. Uh, hang on. Um, language version, right? Where's my version? Just what, what, version? What, what, what version do you want it to be? I'd like this to be version 0 0.2, but with a preview identifier yeah. on the end. That preview? Okay. Okay. I just did that in your sample plugin.csproj file. Did you? Where? Yes. Um, oh, are we still connected? We are connected, but it didn't let me. It didn't show up on my side. And, and, and now, and now it deleted. It deleted. Yeah. Like when Go ahead. Edit that file and save it again. I'm wondering right, if Aaron, it. you want zero zero dot two dash preview. Well, now let me go look, now that you saved. Right, and I can see with the red check that it's been modified. I see, I see what's going on. Okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah it's right now. No, I don't see the, I don't, where'd you put it? Interesting. I put it in the very top property group, um, right under runtime identifier. So, I'm wondering if it's, if it's trying to protect me on that. It probably is. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, so now let me try the .NET pack again. And okay. that's been my experience with LiveShare also. Yeah, that it prevents some of that stuff. Uh, okay. .NET pack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it it didn't give me a... What? It didn't give me the, uh, the NUP keg. No, I don't see it. It's not completed. I wonder why not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. We made that change in... I made that change in sample plugin. Oh, that's where I made it, too. Oh, by the way, the family's awaking, so I apologize for any loud, loudness and the little voices. Okay. Change it in the right one here. Pack it again. There we go. Now I get the NuGet package with the correct name there. Okay. And I know that's really tiny. My apologies. Um, you can no specify slash P to set properties at the property at the command line. That might be important as we go next and say, all right, let's get this packaged. Yeah, now look, you're now you're editing in my CS project. I can see you there. Yep, I was in wrong file. Sorry. So let's... Um, Wow. Uh, Dweedle followed us, and now this is Bolts5556. Thank you for the follows. Man, we're picking up the, f the follower count here today, Brady. Hey, Kevin. Awesome, Kevin Downs is here. Hello. Um, oh, I noticed Carrie cheered one bit extra to get into that first place. <laughs> nice. That's good. All right, so I don't need to commit any of these things. We've kind of proven out here. This is how we set the version number, and we can run .NET pack and package this up. What do you say we we actually get this packaging on uh, get it to do the build on Azure DevOps and then automate the deploy right set up a release pipeline so that it'll also go over to NuGet when it builds properly and we and we approve it. 
I think that's good. I think that's good. No, so I've done this. I've done this with Azure DevOps. Is that where you were thinking of doing it? Yes. There we go. There's okay. my screen. So I've already created. Look at this. I am the bull five. Thank you for the follow. I've already got out here a Fritz and Friends organization that anybody can jump into, and I allocated a Stream Deck Tools project that anybody can connect into with read access. So I'm going to paste that in to the uh, the chat room there. So if you want to check it out, there's a link to go out and, and learn more about that. Uh, let me make sure I have that open. I'm going to need to pause in about 10 minutes here. Um, let's see. All right. So here's here's everything. I want to go over to write its uh, pipelines, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going to do a build pipeline. Yep. No, I'm sorry. What I'm doing is I'm alt tabbing between what I've got created already and what you've got. Um, so what I would do here is I would start with uh, I would click that use the visual designer. Like what's yes. nice on this GUI is it'll give you the you know if you're new to DevOps it kind of gives you the chance to kind of get started up easy. And that's great, but you very quickly get into like, I really want to control this. Um, for us, we know exactly what we want to do. So, oh, yeah. And then. Oh, hey, yeah. Hang on one second, okay? Hang on one second. Sure. Let's step away. Make some more, make some more copy. There goes Brady. All right, I got to key in my two factor authentication code. Um, oh, my gosh. Mike Jolly. Did I beat the game? Where is Bowser? <laughs> 402. Thank you so much for that kind cheer. We'll match and make a, a donation to Black Girls Code this month. Um, that is tremendous. Thank you so much. I got to get my GitHub key in here. 913-769. Um, Verify. Everybody and hurry and hack his account. Everybody hurry and hack it. I'm going to run back over here to the sample plugin. I'm going to make sure I key in... <laughs> While that's getting connected over there, this was a cheer of 402 from the Mike Jolly. So Brady, I'm running the I run a promotion each month called uh, Bits for Bites. So cheering, of course, I match and make a donation. Um, but whoever finishes as the top cheer at the end of the month, I invite to do a little bit of pair programming with me. Oh, I love it. Love it. So this is C sharp Fritz stream deck. Tools is the name of it, sure. right? I like that better. Yeah. It does feel better. No, it doesn't find it. Of course not. I've got too much crap here in in GitHub. Stream Deck Toolkit. I named it wrong. Default branch for manual and scheduled builds. Master. I always wanted. Every time I see Master there, I want to sing Master of Puppets. Who doesn't? I you, know. You, you need that on your button, but they'd probably see you. They'd, they'd get all over me. They'd be upset. Carrie says it's a war. <laughs> okay, now what I did here, and Hanselman wrote a really cool blog post about this. Is like, yeah. uh, like let's say you want to party on a .NET Core release prior to it being released. Like you want to do a build with a preview. Yeah. Like in Scott's case, he was like doing a two two preview build. Okay. Um, so what you end up having to do is you have to pull in. Uh, you have to basically use the .NET Core tools. So I would like go up to the search box and just type use. Um, I think it's like use .NET. I don't see one. Well, no, no. This is a template. Yeah, start with an empty job. Start with an empty job. Okay, okay. And then there we're going to start go. adding things to it. Yeah. Okay. So so add a thing. So I can hit the plus sign there. Uh, the, down uh, here. Agent job. Yep. There you go. Um, so you want to say use .NET space. Like that. .NET. Be somewhere that .NET Core <laughs> SDK installer. You try that first. Okay. Okay, Don't we no, have to no, configure no. our agent first so we specify which agent we want? Yeah, you can do that too. But the nice thing is it really doesn't matter because it's done core. You don't need that anymore, right? Right. Um, so we should be able to build on like a Linux box. You should be able to build on a Linux box. Pardon me, I want to get my coffee. I tell you, this guy going and getting coffee, what do you think this is? Uh, I, I got to fly to freaking Finland. Like, I know, I know. So, all right, if I look at the agent, right, can I specify agent pool, inherit from pipeline? Uh, that, yeah. Can we do hosted Ubuntu 16.04? You could do that. Wait, right. wait, are you going to have any, are you going to have any PowerShell scripts running? No, that's, that's actually in the product. That's in the, the product. product. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. 
Yaml type? No, dev lead. I'm going to avoid the Yaml. No, 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 no. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, there's... That's for devs. That's our real dev. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm going to use hosted Ubuntu. Okay. Come back to yep. use .NET Core. I don't want SDK 104. No, you don't, but that's the good part. You can go up there and you can change that to 2.2. whatever you want, and then you can change it in the version. Well, which SDK am so, I using down here? So let's uh, say .NET, not info. 2.2.1.0. Excuse me, 2.2.100. Okay. So, or, or that, if you're doing a preview. That's fine. No, no, no. Let's do 2.2.100. Now it's installing the SDK. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Right. That, so that kind of sets up your, your, your area... Your build it makes it predictable, and set, you know, like like you know what's going to work. Right. And when I look at mine, I've got I don't have anything in control, and I don't have anything in output. Um, and I've got version zero dot splat selected as well, just like you. Cool. All right. So next one, um, we're going to add a .NET Core step here, right? So we can yep. do the build. Be .NET. Oh, you can do the build. Be .NET. Uh, yeah, .NET build. Well, we got to do a .NET restore first, don't we? No, we touch that. We do build. Yeah, don't you have to restore here? Help me out here, chat room. Don't you have to do a .NET restore first? <coughs> I th I think we do. Whatever. Restore is implicit, says Dev Lead. Oh, okay. Path to projects. Well, if I look at my folder here, uh, da -da -da. it's going to be under source, stream deck lib, and then yeah, the CSP. Like yeah, and like mine's like relative. It's like source, whack, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Source, stream deck, lib. Do I need to give it the name of the CS proj? Um, I did indeed. Yes. I you went did. as far as to give it that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the name of the project file is stream deck lib CS proj. I'm going to cheat and F2 into this so I get the rename. Right. Uh, I don't need any arguments. Well, the argument. Some of the folks in the chat room were saying, pass in the version number from a tag or something from Git. Let's. Yeah, we can, you can definitely do that. That's a, that's a good way to do it. And uh, S and B is is indicating two two one zero two is the current version of the SDK. So I'm going to punch that in there, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that that sticks for us. So .NET build. It's going to call .NET build build this. Um, no arguments. Well, how would we pass in the argument from GitHub for the version number? You would do that up in your variables. Like if, if you see how you've got tasks selected, you would do it in variables. I think that's where you would do it. And then you could pull them in. I think that's where you do it. Yeah, I haven't done this before. Variable groups. Okay. I mean, do you, do, do, do you want to shoot for the moon on the first try or do you want to? Yeah. No, just get it running. Start there. So, um, nerd bank git versioning. Let me get back to that. You could argue that you want restore to be a separate step so it's easier to see what step it failed on. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's a good point. And then... Uh, well, okay, so if we just have it do that, it's going to end up and deliver us a DLL. That'll be the output of this. We should at some point have a .NET test in here to run some tests, but yep. um, I haven't written any tests yet. We can get to that. We can get to that. We can write some unit tests. Yeah. Uh, st steal the core wiki cake script. <laughs> uh, don't... Uh, the concern I have with the with the cake script is it takes all of the tooling that we have here out of the picture and it makes the maintenance completely cake focused and and I I completely lose all of this interaction and all of the power of this platform because it's isolate isolated in this. Um, all right, so I think that's all we need to get started here, right? It's just this. Well, you're also going to need to do a .NET pack. Do we do the pack now, or do we do that when we publish? You would do the pack. You do the pack after the build. So it's it's install the SDK, build, pack, push. Okay, so let's put another put another jammy on here to pack. Mm -hmm. No, oh, well, you just did, did go down looking for .NET Core. Yeah, just grab .NET Core and yep. just make the command instead of build. 
pack. Make it pack. Mm -hmm. And let me look and see if I have anything wonky. So for build, I was pointing to the CS Proj. I'm also pointing to the CS Proj in the pack. But you can probably just leave it. Yeah, you're good. You well, I think that. for the... Yeah, I need to... Oh, look at that. It'll even let me select it now. It's hot. That's so, so cool. All right, that's done. Uh, package folder, build artifact staging directory. Okay, pack options, automatic package versioning. Yes, please. Use the build number for right now. Um, all right. I think that's all for now, right? Cool. Yeah, I think that's it. That's, I'm, I'm looking at mine as you're doing yours, and I think you're good. Don't, don't, don't do that. Wait, wait. Now you, need, now you need one more. Yeah, yeah. You need to do NuGet push. I think the .NET well, push will eventually... I mean, you could do... I think you can do it in pack, but if you add NuGet push, that'll push it out to actual NuGet. Shouldn't... Hang on. Let's do the NuGet push as part of a release pipeline. Okay. I haven't done that. So that it's something separate, so that it fires and goes out there appropriately. That's right. That'd be good. That'd right. Be good. Uh, mm -hmm. Agent pool. We don't want it on that. We want it on hosted sixteen oh four. First, uh, first attempt. First, and I call it an attempt because we'll see how it goes. Andre eighty eight. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Where is the version declared? The version right now is declared inside the CS project file. Um, I'm going to control click to open that so we can watch it build. Yeah. Make sure this thing goes correctly. Hit that. Here we go. Now, I have this, just so everybody knows, I actually have this set up on a uh, little project that I'm working on on the side. Um, it's an extension library that I want to share with everybody as soon as possible. Um, uh, and, and I'm actually using this same thing to push to my get. Mm. Um, and it was nice because I even think my get was a was a task I believe that I could even use or something in there. It was super super easy. Very cool. Um, the one thing that was a gotcha for me was that use .NET Core SDK because whatever the default SDK was happening, I, I was using a later one because I was running a preview build. So that's a valuable step. And I think Hanselman has a blog about that, so you could check out more information on like adding that as a step. Mm. So. Uh, you could do this with Nightly's, and you could even drive that dynamically if you wanted to run from Nightly Bill. Yes. So Admiral Snyder points in a little bit of that direction. Why don't we PowerShell the version out of the CS Proj file? I kind of agree with you. Yeah. But I don't want to push every compile to NuGet. Right. Right. That's why. Uh, that's why for this project, I'd like to make the NuGet deployment a release pipeline. So that after it builds and we have things that we say, yes, this is releasable, we push it over there. Project but, files matching the specified pattern were not found. Oh, I did something wrong. Uh, let's go, configuration. go back over here. .NET build. Path to projects. Source stream deck lib. Stream deck lib dot CS proj. Why didn't it find that? I don't know. Was that, was that what blew up? Yeah. .NET build? Yeah, look at that. The project files matching the specified pattern were not found. Um, er. Be nice if it told us. Okay. So it, it gave us the .NET Core 22102 SDK. So. Right. Source, stream deck lib, stream deck lib CS proj. That sure looks right. Mm -hmm. Can you look at mine over right? You're, you're on build here okay what's the wait, i wait. above the path that's a little helper the path to the cs proj to use you can use wild cards star 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 cs proj so i mean i could make this why won't it let me edit it's cute i can't click anywhere over here right it's now. cute you have it cute build's running uh, but it finished running and it failed. Uh, go just click the click the build. Yeah, there you go. There you go. No, I still can't click in there. Well, click the um, uh, over in builds. Just yeah. click the build, and now click the edit button. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the edit button's kind of hard to find. Now you should be able to edit. So it. I'm going to change that to hosted 1604. Back into here. If I change this, I'm to looking to see what mine is. To I've got inherit from pipeline. So. Yeah, 
Try Trying again. Do it. Is that working directory correct? What working directory? There is no working directory listed here. Oh, there isn't one down here. No, there's not. Oh, and it, look, it doesn't have a source folder here. Huh? There's no... Oh, that's, you're already in source. That's what's wrong. That's what's wrong. Yeah, kill it. Right, so this is where I want to be. Yeah. So I have to get rid of the SRC. Oh, nuts. Save and queue. Removed SRC. All right, do that again. And it's running against... wrong branch. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and it's also on the wrong branch, right? We're building on master where we need to be down in that feature branch. Yep. All right. Not there. Builds. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it for you. Not there. Um, mm -hmm. do you have auto release to VS Marketplace configured for my views, music VS extension? I do not. Hmm. There we go. Build it, .NET build found it. Here we go. This is better. This is better. And it should build pretty quick because it's small. Yeah. And it's just could not find version number in the following format variable build build number. You would just pass build number. Yeah. Okay. So okay. where do we set that build number? Go back to your edit page. Hit builds. I'm back over here. Variables. Oh, I think it's there. How do we Just set paste. it? Just paste. And then what do we set for a value? Uh, do your dot to uh, zero to... But then it's going to be oh, hard that's coded. Your build number. Yeah, that's weird. That's not, it's not weird that's not jamming that build number in. That makes no sense. Right. I don't get that. Yeah. I've never seen that. It's the build number in the options tab. Ta -ta -ta. Build job canceled, demands, build properties, build number format. Leave it blank to give, uh, builds a unique integer as name. Uh, yeah. Developers, okay. developers, developers. Uh, Todd, is that Todd D-Land? Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. It, it's, it says more information, but you go to click it and it doesn't actually go anywhere. The little icon. Uh, bah, 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 team project build definition name. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my gosh. You have options. That's the point. Yeah, I do. I have options. You're. I didn't. I don't see that anywhere in mine. I swear I don't see that. Um, variables. Should be build dot build number. I don't Where? have to pass that anywhere. I passed that nowhere at all. On the docs page. Hmm. I should be able to do just dollar build number, build definition name. What? what? So, build ID. I see a build ID. Uh, okay. ID. Internal ID. immutable ID. All right. So if we just use that just to get this working and punch it in there. Is that the format? Do you want to do it like that? I think you want to do it as a variable, don't you? Well, that's the format. Does it set the variable then? I think you want to do it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it there. Oh, shoot. Deleted it. Build underscore build number. Right? That's what it was okay. complaining it, right. it, it didn't have. Okay. okay. And you paste it in there. That's what you... I think that's what you want. I, it's, that feels like that should be implicit, but... Okay. Run. I don't, I've never had to do that. that. That feels like that should be implicit. I'm just trying all kinds of funny things. Hey, our friend Fanny Reinders is here. Hello, hello. Yeah, it should be a two, two, three, nine here. So. Right. I'll do a drum roll for you. And then I have to sign off because I have to get to the airport. Because you got to run. Mm -hmm. Apologies, everyone. I'd love to hang out till nine, but that's just really bad. Got to go. Mm -hmm. Building all the it's things. No. Nope. Oh, what the? F Didn't find build underscore build number. That is a surprise. I've build underscore that. build number. There it is. I'm gonna get it. 
here, here, do this. Uh, delete that. Let me just try this one, one last thing. Just, just delete the whole thing. Delete the line. Yo. Hey, do uh, uh, get out of that mode so you can trigger a new build. Oh, kill, kill, kill that too. Kill the build number four bat that you got in this guy. Yep. Get rid of that. Save it if you can. Don't, just, don't queue it. Just save it. Okay. Just do that. Um, and now what I want you to do is to do a queue. To do a queue. Trust me. Hit queue. Yeah. And now in here, do add. Mm hmm. Build num. That's where this, or, or whatever it is, build number. Yeah. That's where this feels like it should be implied. And then there, do your. No, no, no. Or, or you can do that too. Oh, uh, well, no, do like 240. This is going to be your build number. Okay. Okay, just do that and queue it. Or 241. Whatever. Yeah. Here it comes. Yeah, it, it it feels like this should already be filled out, and and um, Stelzi yeah, saying one, it that's might that's already be filled might, out for us. Yeah, you might want to talk to the uh, our friends in the product group on that. That doesn't feel right. I don't, mine never does that, for instance. So there it is, running the build. Put 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 put. If it blows up here, then we have we definitely have something we want to talk to somebody about. Nope. Uh, that's weird. I Even though, that. I mean, you can see we're hard coding the variable, the environment mm -hmm. variable, mm -hmm. but it's not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Should be in the following formats, X, Y, Z. We need to set the format for this thing. Oh, uh, you got to take out preview. You got to take out the, the, the no, preview. No, 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 no. That's, that's what it is. It, it wants you to take out that. That's no, no. The build number that's being passed through to it is just is just two forty. Oh uh, yeah. Right. Go back over to here. Go back to option uh, variables. Right. Add build build number number. Right. Yep. And instead of just doing build ID, do zero point two point build yep. ID. Right? Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah. Let's try that, yeah. Okay. That might get it. Again, though, that feels like I've never had to do that. Or might your build number for God's sake, John. Yeah. And then we'll need to put a prefix on the end. Two fresh hats, says CLI here. Yeah, the Sounders, and I've got Philadelphia Fusion on my hat today. They're fresh. And I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the extremely flat brim. I like the curved brim on my hats. But it's now they're calling those dad hats. Yeah, what's with that? I'm a dad. I'm not wearing dad yeah. hats. I don't wear dad tannies either. That's for that's for Pete. Nope. Oh, Doesn't like yeah. that again. What the heck? I don't know. Listen, I have to go. Yeah. I'm to be in trouble. All righty. Thank you for having me. I uh, will be listening later. Um, I'm sure I'll be texting you from the airport. Um, but everybody have a great day. All right. Catch you later, Brady. Thanks so much. See ya. Take care. Sorry, I got to go. All right. Bye. And there goes Brady. Let me turn off his stuff there, and let's extend the chat box. Make that a little bit taller. And that'll refresh, and we'll have... There we go. Uh, great thing about my stream is that you hit the issues. Uh, yeah, right? I do hit these issues, and it's like it doesn't tell me how to solve this. Right there's it. It's very. I'm gonna say this again about about Azure DevOps. I find it extremely unfriendly. Um, so I'm gonna play uh, some music to go by here in the background. I'm gonna kick off Orchid. Or Orchid. This is music from our friend Mr. Carl Franklin. Scientifically designed, engineered to get you in the groove, to get you in the flow, so that you can build code, you can work on whatever it is that you might have and let it all fade away and focus on whatever the task is at hand. Works great for writing code, doing homework, or even doing chores around the house. Thank you so much, Carl, for letting us play, uh, play your music here on stream. Uh, read the chat. What? It should be the format of four numbers with three dots between them. It also says three digits as well. And I do have it as three digits. If you look at my configuration 0.2. dot the build ID 
So, it's not taking that. You want me to hard code it? Sure. I'll hard code it. 0 0.2.240. Fire that off again. The whole message, the value of the variable should contain a substring with the following formats. A substring, x.y.z or x.y.z where a, x, y, and z are positive integers. They were, it should handle three digits, but it's not. And it's not telling me what number it did receive so that I can possibly debug that. It's not telling me what value is there. It's literally just saying, does not work. And it's not telling me what the values are that are there. Literally, this tells me nothing. Right? Current agent version. It's not showing me any of the environment variables that were set. None. How am I supposed to debug this? Just clicking run? That's stupid. No. Sorry. Try to put a valid semver in the build number. I'll be happy to. Right? So build underscore build number. That's what it's saying. Build underscore build number. I will put a fourth digit in there. Dot zero. That is valid semver. You can put a step in between the that echoes the variable. How? I'm not queuing it yet. I'm going to go back over here to tasks. So that's a variable right there. That's available for everybody to see. Tasks. And if I go... Before we run pack, if I add a task in here, uh, command line. Build, build number. Right, I'm echoing it out. How good is Azure comparable to other CI tools? It's tremendous, <clears throat> it has a tremendous set of features and capabilities. My problem is the documentation and the helpfulness of these screens is not great. Once you have, once you have this thing working, it's phenomenal. The problem is getting there. Ah, I forgot the percents around it. Thank you. Hit it again. Let's see how this goes. Try to enable the detail logs. There must be an advanced option. <sighs> I hope. When it gets down here to the command line script, we should be able to see it. Da, 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 da. And then. Bang. Still doesn't run. Command line script. Echo. Did not find that parameter set. It didn't set the value. Uh, hello? Oh, you know what? I know why. Uh, .NET pack. Use the build number doesn't work with semver like that. I'm not even getting there. I'm not even there. Use automatic package versioning. Use the build number. Note the build number is set correctly in the options of the build definition. No. No. Uh, we've determined the issue is not a bug. When you use the build number for package version, the build number... The dream alive. Thank you, Wolfgang Blitz. I appreciate the 100 bits there. That's phenomenal. I'll match and we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. And did I mention I Love Code with the sub there? 
Thank you, I love code for the sub. I appreciate that very, very much. Instead of command line script, you can use a PowerShell step. No, I cannot. This is Linux. Do an inline script and... No. I don't think... Did, unless they have the PowerShell running on Linux over here. Um, th this tells me nothing. They literally copied in the error message. No. Th that is a awful response from customer service, and they should be embarrassed by that response. Uh, is it on the Linux hosts? Maybe. But the build number is not being set, right? Let's just start there. That's not being set. Configuration to packages. Build configuration package folder is this. Pack options. Use the environment variable. See if that picks it up. Um, but it should be there in the environment variables. Um, all right, let's take a look. See. Sonner Ganol. Welcome. Hello, hello. Thanks for joining us. My concern here, this is, look, Azure DevOps is a tremendous tool. It has phenomenal power. There is so much you can do with it. My challenge is the help you fall into the pit of success. Show me a little bit more diagnostic information. Let me as a developer, as somebody in DevOps, figure out, give me the information I need to succeed. Show me exactly what it's calling and doing so I can figure this out. Sure looks like it ran that pack properly now, but what did it get for that build number? What did it, it it's not telling me where I packed it. Done building project. You shouldn't have had to build it, it's already built. Dear Lord, look at the detail, ugh. Slash output package version equals two, four, five. Um, but it doesn't show me the name of the NuGet package that it output here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Down here. It just says finished. There it is. Output file. Stream deck 24500. So it took the build number directly. Yeah, you can't grep here. What are you, what are you thinking? No. This is a, uh, this is just a browse. Um, okay, so the build number that it took in while it worked, right, isn't, isn't the build number that I want. Enter the variable name, right? If I said use the build number, Is that coming out of over here? Right? Yeah, I wish I could grab. You're right, CLI Hero. That'd be really nice. Uh, let's see. So if I do 0. Point, see, if I want to version this, right, and have it increment and, and follow a tag or something. So if I go 0, 02 dot and then key in the build ID. Right? Now that feels like it'll be along the right path. 02246. That looks like what I want. And then we can start talking about the release pipeline and publishing here. Let's see if this works. It looks like it should. Looks like it. So, it says that the build.build .build number is configured in the options and creates it how you told it to format. Fantastic. So I try to be fair around my criticism of, of projects and tools. My, my goal is, you know, to be able to, to make sure that we know how to use things easily and quickly and make folks as productive as possible, as easy as possible, right? 
Um, there we go. Fantastic. And when it ran the pack, let me go to the end here. The package it created, there it is, 02240 Nupkek. Now that's interesting. It's 02240, even though it's 246. Where did it get 240? Know what I mean? Is the, uh, right? So two build ID. Let me go over here, variables. I think it's still pulling that. Let me get rid of that. Try this one more time. And I think we're on it. You're on escape call and miss the fix. There's an option in the pack command here that says under pack options, automatic package versioning, use the build number. That wasn't set. So with that set now, we should see 02247 here load up appropriately. Checking if a cached copy exists. It does. But doing that install, if the cached copy, if the SDK isn't there, it ensures that it's there. So there it goes, running the pack. Another soundbite suggestion, Ernest P. Worrell saying, you know what I mean? Well, hang on, I've got... Oh, rats, this is an older... <gasps> this is an older instance here. What'd you do? I compiled it, that's what I did. Scroll down, and 02247. We got it! I love it when a plan comes together. That's right, Hannibal. Plan did come together. All right. Okay, so it's building properly, and I can set up how this triggers um, so we can verify that it runs properly. Yeah. All right. I'm pretty happy about that. Next piece is going to be to build the release pipeline, which will actually do the publish when the build is successful. And I don't want it to build and deploy. I don't want it to deploy to NuGet for every successful build. I only want to have it deploy on certain scenarios. Hey, Welsh Ronaldo, good to see you. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy about this. Um, Gomer Pyle saying, golly. I like that one too. Gomer Pyle. Golly. All right, I will take that note. Good suggestion. Export your pipeline as YAML and slap it into VC, version control. Not a bad idea. Actually, it does. It saves the pipe, it saves it as a pipeline out there inside GitHub. Year, month, day, yes. Um, let me get there. Might be able to do something with that. Um, but first, I wanna I wanna take a moment. I've got I've got an ad to read. Um, so JetBrains is sponsoring us today. I'm going to thank them for, for sponsoring us. Um, have you heard about JetBrains Rider? Have you seen JetBrains Rider? They've got, they, they've written, our friends at JetBrains, they've put together a, um, an IDE, an integrated development environment that, let me bring up the Rider page here, that you can use to build .NET projects and it's built with all the same tools that you know and love around ReSharper. Um, it's based on the IntelliJ uh, platform and ReSharper. It's really cool. I love seeing this because it puts a little bit of pressure on Visual Studio and makes, makes choice available. And when there's choice available and competition, that means that everybody's going to get better tools in the long run. So if you haven't checked out, if you haven't seen Writer, I want you to give it a try. You can develop .NET, ASP.NET, .NET Core, Xamarin, and Unity applications for Windows, Mac, or Linux. All right? Check out Rider today. You can try it free for 30 days. I actually have a code, a URL that you can go to, and you'll be able to get all kinds of great information about JetBrains and Rider. Here it is. I'll punch it into the chat room here. There we go. Check out that link to let them know that you saw a little bit about Ryder here on, on my stream. Let them know all about it. That's jetbrains.com slash JF. Just like my initials, Jeff Fritz. Do jetbrains.com slash JF. Check out some information about Ryder here. 
and uh, give it a try. Let them know what you think. There's some really neat, unique features in here that aren't in Visual Studio, and you get all that refactoring stuff that you loved from ReSharper. I want to thank JetBrains for supporting us today, and uh, I'm really, I'm really thrilled that uh, that we're able to see alternative IDEs like Rider out there that support the .NET environment. All right. Uh, need a live share plugin for Rider? Well, that's just it. Live share is a Visual Studio technology. If Rider had its own type of share feature, sure, that'd be cool. But live share is it, it's it's Visual Studio live share, right? It's not a .NET feature. It's a Visual Studio feature. Just like all the refactoring stuff in ReSharper, it's a ReSharper feature. So. Um, Writer and Visual Studio's relationship is analogous to BMW and Mercedes. Yeah, you're right. They're they're competitors, but they're competing in such a way that they're each making the ecosystem that they're competing in, right? That market better. How's the cost of Writer versus Visual Studio? I haven't looked at. I haven't looked at costs at all. Is Writer using Roslyn? Um, I don't know. I'm not familiar. Um, I had to work with IntelliJ IDEA once. Not at all compatible compatible with Visual Studio muscle memory. Sorry to hear that, Admiral Schneider. ReSharper taught me link with the suggestions feature. Yes, I ran into that also. Always look at how they suggested changing bits of my code to be more linky. <laughs> linky? Wow. That's okay. Sharp Develop, that used to be a thing. Yeah. That was an open source tool that became... Um, Right, they began to productize it and add some additional features, make it commercial, and it became Xamarin Develop, which evolved even more and became Visual Studio for Mac. But I think Sharp Develop is still out there. Let's take a look and see if we can start building a release pipeline for this. What do you think? So we can get our first instance of this library available, and then we can back up and start looking at the template and updating our template so it uses some of the new features we built into, um, we, we just merged in and built into the .NET standard library. More linky equals more functional, as in functional programming. That's not bad. That's not a bad thing. I, I'm open to doing some more functional programming type things, right? Uh, have a hard time getting comfortable with IDEs that's not a plugin-oriented text editor like Vim, Sublime, VS Code. That's fine, right? These are, these are, um, these are choices that we make, right? And not every, not one size fits all. There are some folks that like a nice big IDE that has all kinds of features, um, and other folks like tight text editors like Vim and Emacs. Tom McHugh is here. Hey, Tom, good to see you. Um, no, I don't think you'll see Visual Studio, full Visual Studio on Ubuntu. That's why VS Code is available and over there. And you can do all kinds of great things over there. The, the fact is, the number of folks that want to do um, full IDE work on Linux is very, very small. Um, okay, I need to do, I want to do like a new get. No, I'm going to end up having to do an empty job here. All right. Um, I need to add an artifact. I'm going to take an artifact from the build from Stream Deck Tools. Stream Deck Tools CI. Um, latest from the build pipeline default branch with tags. Okay. Uh, I don't know what tag. Source alias. Sure. Yep, let's add that. All right. So the first stage, this is really just the publish, right? And I, I do want to add a gate to this. Right? Uh, so let's just call this publish to NuGet. Um, name and owners of the stage. Okay, yeah, that's me. There it is. So copy of publish. No, I don't want that. No, go away. How do I delete this? Delete that. I only need one. This one. Add. No. So what do I... Pre-deployment conditions. Okay. Um, manual only. 
pre-deployment approvals, select the users who can approve or reject deployments. Yes, and it's going to be me. No, me. Uh, timeouts, uh, seven days. The user requesting release or deployment should not approve it. Nah. To find gates to evaluate before. No, it's only me approving this. I don't want to let this just go out. All right, so tasks. Ah, here we go. So we can add tasks. Uh, let me check out what's going on over here. Azure DevOps has a private package feed feature. It does, um, but I, I want to make this public. Um, I could use a private package feed for testing for QA. That might be fun. Robert Tables uses Visual Studio Code and also Vim, different tools for different jobs. Yeah. Prefer hybrid programs written be using object-oriented and functional programming in the right places. Right. There's the right tools for the right job. So functional programming, object-oriented programming, really depends on what you're doing. You get Visual Studio on Mac OS. Yes, because right, we want to be able to enable folks doing Xamarin with uh, iPhone development over there and Android development and now ASP.NET Core as well. I like IDEs, but many of them give me magic that confuses me. Linking libraries and protocols, I have no idea what it did other than I right-clicked in the menu. Some folks don't care that it it works. They don't care. They don't want to go digging into it. They're not at a sophistication where they want to know everything that the code is and that the tool does for them. It solved their problem. They move on. There is a level of sophistication where you do want to know everything that your tools do for you. I completely get it. And that's why tools like Visual Studio Code and the .NET command line are very compelling. What template did you select at the very first step? Empty. I selected an empty template. I'm one of the folks that don't care. I like the magic black box of productivity. You know, yeah. Just make the thing happen. Um, all right. So published a new get agent job. Let's have this run on hosted Ubuntu. Um, let's add a step here and we are going to do can I just do .NET publish let's look up NuGet .NET core NuGet version synchronizer no 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 new keeper no release packager create a package release for multiple projects no deprecated tasks uh no let me go with .NET core and not build, but let's do let's see here hmm. right, if I do .NET NuGet, isn't there .NET NuGet push .NET NuGet push and then I should be able to specify Source, timeout, there's my API key right there for the server. So I have an API key for NuGet.org. You had a NuGet push command. Was there? Ah, thank you. Uh, build artifact staging directory star.nupkeg. Nupkeg, that's how it's pronounced. Do it live! And that's what we call it. Um, target feed. Uh, target feed location, external NuGet server. No results found. Manage my NuGet servers. Uh, service connections. Add a service connection. Is there NuGet in here? <gasps> there is. Fantastic. Connection name. Uh, NuGet C sharp frets. Feed URL. Well, it's NuGet, right? Uh, for NuGet, use this. All right, fine. API key. Now, I need to get my API key from NuGet.org. Nupkeg, learn something new every day. Yes, developer's garage. Absolutely. John Galloway says it's pronounced Nerp Kurg. Hey, John Galloway. Woo! Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm going to go find my... API key. I've got to do that off screen because it's kind of a private thing. And uh, no offense, but I don't want to dox myself again. Know what I mean, Vern? 
Um. <laughs> hey. Thanks so much for that kind cheer, John. 100 bits. Um, I'm going to I'm going to drop that into Did we have another cheer just a little bit ago? But I will make a matching donation to Black Girls Code this month. I'm scrolling up. I'm looking at there was somebody else that cheered. I want to make sure I covered them also. There it was. Wolfgang Blitz. Hang on one second here. I want to make sure I cover. We had 100 from Wolfgang Blitz. Wolfgang Blitz. And 100 from the John Galloway. There we go. We'll make sure that that little bit of graffiti gets in there. Uh, da -da -da. All right, let me go grab my API key. So let's create one. I'm going to call this uh, DevOps release. Expires in, sure, expires in a year. Gets push, new packages and package versions, select packages. Uh, I'm going to let it push all, create the key. Um using the copy button below. There we go. Johan! Incoming. <laughs> Thanks so much. Give me one second here. I am... Uh, I'm confused. Copy that over. Let me throw one more line in here. Thank you so much, Johan. And we'll make that matching donation to Black Girls Code this month. Fantastic. Duct tape, it works. Yes, it does. There's still no task for putting an artifact into OneDrive. Where's a good place to put my binaries if I don't have an FTP? Um, you could put them into Azure Storage, Azure Blob Storage, and it'll work from there. Uh, I'm going to regenerate that because I just showed it. And I realize that's bad. Um, and I'm going to take this off screen to make sure... Oh, good. It doesn't show the API key. All right. So now I've got NuGet sitting there. Um, so if I go back to my new release pipeline, I should be able to pull this down now. There it is. So publish to NuGet for me. We should get star.nupkeg published. I think that's what we want. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, here we go. Um, I think that's all I need, right? Uh, sure. I don't know what that did. Um, <laughs> where are we going here? So, if I go back to the pipeline, that's it. That's my steps. Is this artifact happens, and then publish to NuGet. What do you think? Should I try releasing? Should I try doing a release? Do I need to push an initial release so that it's out there? I think I do. I think I need an initial release on NuGet. Um... No, I don't s upload package. I don't want to upload a package just yet. You only live once, right? And then tag the release on GitHub. Yes. Actually, shouldn't that be a final step here? Oh my gosh. Fanny, thanks so much for that kind cheer. 400 bits. We'll put you into the list here. And that actually moves. Oh my gosh. There we go. Um, you're right. We should have after the publish happens, right? So after we push, we should put a tag in the GitHub repository, right? Tag branch on release. Yes, please. Generating a change log, would that be the build or publish? I think publish. Task for tagging or branching TFS git artifacts during a release with the same name. Now wait, git tag. 
Right? There should be like a... Right? Shouldn't there be like a thing here that says, okay, this finished. Retention, options, integrations. Mm. Enable the deployment status badge. Sure. That's fine. We'll copy that over later. Yeah, that's not it. There's a thing that lets you tag the release. GitHub release. Create, edit. Well, there's one of these. Some settings need need attention. You think? Uh, version zero dot. Okay. So we're gonna create a release to GitHub Connection One repository. Ugh. Ugh. Go, go. C sharp for now. It's not letting me type. Rats. I tried starting to type. Hey, Fairy Wings, thanks so much for the host. It didn't pop up. Hmm. Hmm. Git tags are not the same as release. Uh, Tom McHugh. Did someone say graffiti? <laughs> I'll put another one out there. Thank you so much for that. Another hundred biddies from Mr. Tom McHugh. Hey, Fairy Wings. I've, I gotta capitalize that second M. There we go. Make that appropriate, and we'll commit that and get it in the mix. Um, no, it's it's not. That feels bad. Hmm. Still loading. I know I've got a lot of GitHub repositories. Capitalize the Q in Tom Q. Yeah, you're right. Let's get that capitalized. Hmm. Can I type? It won't let me type. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mike Jolly, thank you so much for that 10 bits. Uh, that's, le you know what? I'm gonna aggregate here and put that there. Thank you very, very much. No. No, well, let me type. I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> Refresh the GitHub connection? Sure, let's do it. That's loading. Idea, make Fritz bot react on cheers and protocol them and do a source. That's not bad. Walsh9, you like the fusion hat? You like that? I, and if you missed the beginning of the stream, I was particularly calling out uh, Fusion University, their their team that plays for the Contenders League, right? That's kind of the minor league underneath Overwatch League. Uh, they won the North American Championship over the weekend. Um, yeah, Philadelphia sports team won in the playoffs over the weekend. Not like that other one. And uh, <laughs> they won undefeated this season. Undefeated. Uh so tremendous accomplishment for them and I wanted to salute them with my fusion hat today. Do I have a release pipeline at all for a NuGet package or could you have the build pipeline use .NET push? I could have the build pipeline use .NET push. I don't want the build pipeline to do that because that would then push every version that built and that doesn't feel th that feels um, that feels inappropriate because if I'm building and I'm using DevOps to build and do checks for things like pull requests, well then I'm building and deploying versions that shouldn't be deployed. Um, <laughs> Anybody have a favorite library to prevent JavaScript injection? Basically sanitize JavaScript paste as, passed as a parameter. Whew, excuse me, Hugo. Um, I do not. I. I don't know about that. And it's still not letting me click in here. That feels bad, man. What if I refresh the browser? Maybe I'm... Maybe I've I've boofed it here a little bit. <sighs> yep, look at that. Boom. 
the the GitHub releases missing. GitHub release. Add. Okay. GitHub connection one. And it won't let me type in the box. You can deploy all the ones that don't feel right with the pre-release flag. I don't want to do that, Lithix. That does not feel that does not feel responsible to the community for me. If I'm publishing, if I'm publishing um, releases that were created as part of a pull request validation, that's that to me feels wrong. That's not something that you as a developer should want to get into. Yeah, well, let me type in here. This isn't working, right? I'm locked out of this. Cheer war. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Uh, there was also another git tag step. I looked for that. Didn't see it there. That's not working, so let's just remove that. So if I looked for tag, it's in the marketplace. A simple task that tags the current branch with a specified tag. Right. So if I add this into the mix, you can set the CI on the build pipeline to only build when a particular branch updates. So you could have a release branch. That I think is more appropriate on the master branch. Yes. Slightly different, slightly different build. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Use GitHub in the search. So if I did a search here, I get GitHub release, GitHub tool, GitHub tools tasks, GitHub pages publish, issues release gate. No. So I added Come on, where is it? Hey, code air. Go code air. Let me make sure I say that right. Uh, refresh. There it is. Add the git tag. All right. Git tag, system default working directory, short tag, user. No. Tag email. I've got to put my email in here. Um, yeah, no. Come on, let me go get my profile. Does my GitHub connection have right permissions? It does. I, I did an OAuth over there, so yes, it does. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Settings. Emails. And I'm grabbing my no reply email address. There. Build, build number, tag message. Release that. Wow. Released. Use light. What's a lightweight tag? Eh. Okay. So that looks like that should do it. It didn't specify what. It didn't specify what repository to do that in. Or to push it back. Yep, I put the anonymized email in there, but that doesn't... isn't pushing it back to GitHub. What do you think, chat room? That doesn't feel right. Makes no sense as the push takes the artifact from the build. No connections. Yeah. Yeah. The repository isn't here. I don't think this is doing what I want. Build and release tasks for GitHub. All right, so let's... 
Creator modified GitHub release allowing to upload assets, check manifest content, and more. Uh, learn more. You can specify the following tag name, release body, blah, blah, blah. Allows you to create a GitHub account. Well, actually, when you do a release, it is a tag, isn't it? So this... Let's try this one more time here. Just because I'm a glutton for punishment. Working directory, does it pick up from there? Mm, not clear. Yeah, it doesn't create a GitHub release. It just tagged it. This should be creating release, and it doesn't work. I mean, this is a preview. So I'm going to nuke that. Let's come back over here, look back for GitHub, and let's grab that build and release tasks. Do this. Um, click the manage link for GitHub. Make sure it's all right. All right, well, let's try that. Uh, manage. GitHub connection one, created by me, services using OAuth. I'll update the connection. Authorized, okay. So if I come back over here and I choose GitHub connection one. Is it gonna find it? Are we gonna get it? Come on! Do it! It can be done exactly how I want it. This is how I want it. The only question is, are you the man to do it? I better be. Uh, on the left menu, under repositories, there is a tags option. That's tags for inside of a DevOps repository, which is not what I have. I have a GitHub repository. Uh, yeah. Foop. Foop? Hugo, what's foop? I don't know what foop is. It's crazy. No. These aren't working. They're foopy. Foopy? Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt reference. Ah. Yeah, this feels... I'm, I'm like... What do I do with this thing? I'd love to be able to type in this box. It won't let me. Their way of swearing. <laughs> All right, so that doesn't work. Feels bad, man. I'd really like to be able to run that to create that issue. Is my GitHub connection good? It's amazing. Um, it's getting the code and, and building, right? It's doing the thing. Um, let's just run it. Do the thing. Click on a stage to change its trigger from automated to manual. No. Release one has been created. Da, 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 da. What the hell is this? Artifacts manually triggered. Okay. Deploy. Deploy. Waiting in the deployment queue. Pending approval. Approve. Yes. Do it. Is it there? Is it secret? Is it safe? Stream deck lib. No. Where'd it go? Oh wait, Stream Deck Tools. 
Nope, still not there. Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to create the release, get it to publish. Failed. What, you finally tell me this? No packages match the search pattern. Huh? Uh, yeah. Very detailed in that. Crazy, 240SX, 180 bits. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Two, uh, 100 and, 180? Okay. Make sure I get that number right. Crazy. 240SX. Thank you so much for that kind cheer. We'll match and make that uh, make that donation to Black Girls Code. Um, yeah, it's not very detailed in what's going on here. Right? It's not actually showing me the command. Um, so let's go back. Take a look at this. Uh, go away. Hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Mike Jolly, thank you so much for those 88 bits. Oh boy. Now you're going to make me have to do some math here. 88 bits is going to push that to 500? Yarg! <laughs> Yarg with... How many is that? Oh my gosh. 600! Fantastic. Thank you so, so much. Cheer Wars needs a logo. Yeah, right? Edit it and see if I missed a setting. Yeah, I'm going to have to... Where's the edit? Where's the, where's the edit button? Releases. Okay. Where's... Uh, artifact staging directory star dot nupkeg. Okay. Do, is it something like that? Go back to the pipeline. Right, so coming out of this... Um, let's take a look at the previous run here. Whoa! Kulu 83! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for that. That's a very kind cheer. <laughs> Uh, I just made a GitHub release task at, on one of my private projects, and it works fine for me, for you. Oh my gosh, John Galloway, well, that fifty-seven bits. You're, now you're making me do advanced math here. Thank you very very much. Um, so this was manually triggered. Did it actually find the file? Wait a sec. How do I know if it found the file? There's 247. It did a pack. Like, right? How does it... Ancient Coder, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much for that, that resub. Um, and Kevin, thank you for the, for the sub. Uh, yes, we're supporting Black Girls Code this month phenomenal thank you so so much everybody very generous today um i gotta check my list of appointments here make sure i've got my timing correct yeah we're good we're good all right um so this isn't clear to me right it's like it didn't find the files uh friday must be payday for everyone uh, a second will do for now. <laughs> thank you, crazy. Uh, another 181. Wow. Uh, uh, carry the, carry the thing, and that's uh, 361. 
phenomenal. Uh, does the .NET pack in your build actually create a build artifact for your release to consume? You may need to add a publish build artifacts build step. Ah, that might be it. Okay, so let me jump back over here. Let's edit the build. So we just did .NET pack, right? Uh, options. Tension policies, blah, 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 blah. No. Right, is there a publish build artifacts or something like that here? I don't know how to do this. How do we do this? Publish, publish pipeline artifact. Ah. What's the difference between pipeline artifact and build artifact? What's this do? Name of this artifact, drop. Uh, okay. No. That doesn't feel right. Right? Publish, what should I be grabbing here? Check the files in your build outputs. In the build summary, you can view the created artifact drop that is passed into the... Re yeah, there, so it didn't create one. Because there wasn't one. Wow, Mike Jolly. Boom goes the dynamite. Thank you so much for that. Wow. Uh, where'd it go? Mike Jolly. Phenomenal. <laughs> Into first place. <laughs> uh, Hold John. I have no idea what any of this is, but my class was canceled. So, hello. Hey there, Hold John. Good to see you. Um... So I need to publish the artifact, right? I need to publish build artifacts, right? So if I add that, what does this do? Artifact name drop and it path to publish. Artifact staging directory. I, I don't, this isn't clear to me what it's doing at all. Help, help me Obi-Wan Kenobi. So we have done the .NET publish. We have that. Um, yes, I am looking to get started with artifacts. How do we do this? Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Kulu, thank you so much for that. Um, wow. Thank you very, very much. And, and we will be making donations to Black Girls Code. Variables defined in my release pipeline. Um, but I'm in the build pipeline, right? Hmm. Let me see. Yes, it's referenced over there. Yes. So how do I publish this? Like path to publish, right? This is the file or path to publish. Can be fully qual fully qualified. Blah blah blah. Wildcards are not supported. You stink. Variables are supported. All right. <laughs> the local path on the agent where any artifacts are copied before being pushed. No. Build URI. No. Build binaries. No. Build repository local path. I think that's what I want. Is I want to go from there and copy from there. Ugh. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. If we take a look at one of the previous builds, right? This is so confusing. Right? So like .NET pack ran. Right? Now I got to go figure out where the file ended up. Right? There it is. Right? Target pack in file. And it, it's, it's not where I wrote it. Right? Uh, here it is. 
Home VSTS Work 1A. Now, how do I get that location? Let's put these two side by side. Right, that's like the working folder. Not the binaries. Right, because it put it... Oh, it's confusing. Yeah, I guess that's it. Artifact staging directory. Okay. Because that looks the same. So then if... Right, if I grab that... Oh my goodness. Oh, it's Bobby. Zero, less than three is black girl's code in C sharp three. Thank you so, so much. Oh my gosh. Off zero, Bobby. Holy cannoli. I'm going to type this in, one in. 2,500. Off zero, Bobby. Wow. Thank you very, very much, everybody. I, I am flattered. You, oh. Thank you very, very much, everybody, for that. Um, that That is amazing. Very, very cool. Yes, and supporting Black Girls Code. Every every uh, um, subscription and, and bit is going to Black Girls Code this month. I think I need to put the build number in there so I can get it to line up, you know? Right, I think it's the build ID. No, build number. Yeah. Right, so if I go back, back one more. So it's like dollar parens and jam that in there, right? Does that look right? What do you think? No problem, Off Zero Bobby. I'm I'm happy to to since the stream is part of what I do for my job, right? Um this is it's become part of what I do for for my employer um, it doesn't feel right for me to to accept subscriptions in cheers and keep them when when my employer is paying me to do this but that's why I feel it's important that I'll I'll match the first handful of uh, handful first X amount of dollars of uh, subscriptions and cheers and let's give that to a charitable cause that does support those folks um, sponsors, folks that, that, that want to do sponsorships with me, um, can help me grow this a little bit. Um, and I'm happy to, to help those folks out as well. The, uh, Yarg, thank you so much for the sub and Rudder Town with the follow. Thank you so much. We are getting closer and closer to that rainbow beard goal. And I know there's some folks here that are dying to see me do it like fairy wings and Carrie Payette want to see me dye that beard rainbow. Mike Jolly! Oh, it's getting real now. Wow! Wow, Mike, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Um to tip that over by one. Thank you very, very much. I'm gonna cue this. Um and see if we can get that artifact published. Uh Luddy Lol. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. It is a bit of a war now. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um Thank you so, so much. Um, and uh, while we're waiting for this to build, I want to um, call attention. I, I created an, an event for Thursday stream. Um, uh -oh, what happened there? Oh, new Docker. Oh, my gosh. And, and my bot. Where'd my bot go? Oh, it's good. Um, Thursday stream, uh, I created an event for it. It's when I typically have guests on. This Thursday, Julie Lerman from Pluralsight and the Data Farm and MSDN Magazine will be joining us. And we're going to talk about serverless interactions and Cosmos DB. Um, Julie's always a lot of fun. She's a tremendous speaker and awesome teacher. I hope you join us on Thursday. Tell your friends, tell your families, tell your pets. Uh, that Julie will be joining us and we're going to have a great time. We Julie will be joining us and we're going to have a great time together. Can't wait, says Off Bobby. Off Zero Bobby. Oh yeah, me neither. Uh, going ballistic math. <laughs> That's not a bad one either. Let me grab... We're going ballistic math from Top Gun. 
gotta have lots more sound effects. Oh my. Lots of sound effects. So let's see, did that publish work properly? Upload to container. Okay, so I should now be able to look at the release, right? And it should have triggered a release, new release pipeline. Uh, didn't do anything. Right? Release two has been queued. It should have, oh wait, this is manually triggered. It shouldn't be. All right, we'll figure that out in a second. I'm doing, I'm not doing that right. Deploy. Yes. That should be manually done. And approve, yes, approve. Approved, okay. View logs, let's watch this go. Iced TK. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us here. Auth0 is a pretty cool set of tools. We're, I'm, I, I need to spend more time with what they've got over there. Your cat will be tuning in. s &B, thank you for telling your cat wow. to join us. <laughs> um, I don't have... I don't have... Hmm. Come on, we're waiting for the job to start. And then? And then hopefully it deploys to NuGet properly. And then? We'll see. Did it grab it? It grabbed the drop. <gasps> Dot net push. And then? It didn't make it. Um, so download artifact. Did it get it? Downloaded drop 248 and up keg. Okay, so we got it. And then .NET push. No packages matched the search pattern. Yeah, you ought to. I think I have the wrong name on it, right? Because the artifact it brought artifact it brought down looked like this. So let me copy that. And go back over here. Let's edit the release pipeline because. I didn't do it right. I know I haven't done this right. So, um, let's click this. On build, enable the tr create a new release every time a new build is available. Y sure. Build branch filters. Oh, look at that. Branch filter, yes. Include on the build branch master. Ah, there we go. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me to always do this when I have a master build. Pull release. Enabling this will create a release every time a selected artifact is available as part of a pull request workflow. Well, there we go. Right? Creates a release every time. So target branch master. Zero of one stages are enabled for pull request. You can enable a stage for pull request in the pre-deployment conditions of that stage. I don't know what that is. I don't want to figure that out right now. Okay. So that should trigger automatically. This stage needs to be um, after release. Artifact triggers, yes. Schedule, no. Pull request, no. Pre-deployment, am I doing this right? Um, very cool, maybe we can integrate Auth0 into Core Wiki. Yes, love that idea. Um, okay, that looks right. So then, Right, I've also got the, it needs the approval, fine. So now let's look at my task. So .NET push, I have it going down a folder looking for star nupkeg. Um, I think that's what I want. Let's give this a try. Click on the stage to change its trigger from automated to manual. No, do it. It found the, the artifact. So release three has been created. I need to approve it. Let's see if it finds it. Because instead of it trying to drill down a folder, it should find that star nup keg. Sounds like a pair programming stream to me. Yes, 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 it does. Um, da -da -da. Download build artifacts. Okay, so it downloaded it. Good. No. And it's just saying no packages match the search pattern. Are you kidding? Edit release. 
go back. You can edit approvals, tasks, and variables of this release. No, don't do that. Bad idea. I want to edit the pipeline, right? Publish, look at the tasks, push. Path to the packages. Drop that. So if I change this to stream deck lib star dot nupkeg, it should get it, right? Co-streaming. Oh yeah, co-streaming is definitely a thing. So that looks like it should go. Let's see if that publishes. Right, do the release. Create it. Approve it. Yes, approve. If it's doing a filter on master, I could, I could remove my manual intervention there. Can you get the build number from the build pipeline? I think so, Hugo, I think so. Definitely feels like there's a way to do that. 130 followers from the Rainbow Beard. Oh man, we're getting close. I feel so good about that. Thank you everybody for, for chiming in, for joining me today. For Brady joining us a little bit earlier today. That was great. I was thrilled that Brady was able to join us for a little bit. Um, here we go. Okay, downloaded the artifact. Push. No. Does not support using an encrypted API key. Huh? So how do I push? So how do I do a .NET push? Rainbow beard without matching eyebrows would look just weird. Now cut that out, SNB. Right? It did find it. Yeah, we <laughs> we got a step ahead. <laughs> um, dash K API key. Right? The API key for the server. Thanks. Okay, so let's go back over to the release. Um, let's take a look at this again. Are we, am I passing the API key in properly? Push. And I'm using my NuGet server. No. Connect to service using credentials. And I keyed in an API key there. There's two of them. You probably need to use all of the available replacement variables to build the path. Yes, I think you're right. And I, um, so let me back up to that. Uh, let's learn more here. Create a service connection, blah, blah, blah. New get service connection. API key required when the connection type. Duh. And you blow it. Of course, that's what it is. Um. Do I use username and password and force it in there? There, there is another one here, right? I could do basic authentication, and key in my username and password, but. The point is use an API key because now it's got two-factor authentication and it's got a whole bunch of other security there. So you want to use an API key for NuGet, right? There is, right? That's an external server. I No. I'm connecting out to the public NuGet repository. Um, not that. Where'd the release... Uh, don't need that. That's where I am. <laughs> hmm. It 
should be passing that API key. Right? I'm NuGet dotnet push nuget push and right it it should be pulling that api key out to build it i would think uh dotnet nuget push azure devops what is under options in the release task General integrations published in NuGet. Mm. But it's no push NuGet packages to Azure DevOps feeds. Unable to push to DevOps feed. Create Blazor NuGet package with Azure DevOps. Versioning and publishing NuGet packages automatically. Blah, 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 blah. Assign the version number from the build number. Already got that. Um, directory build, .NET new, pre-release tags for integration builds. Yes. Um, that's nice. Uh, da -da -da -da. Automating build and publish with Azure DevOps. Right. Publish build artifacts. Uh huh. Uh huh. New get push. Build artifact staging directory packages. Star nupkeg source. And that's going to a my get. And it's passing API key in as an encrypted variable there. So I feel like if I come back over to the pipeline here, right? I feel like this should be picking up and just here's the command line to execute. The control options here, timeout, run this task only when the previous task succeeded and then output variables, no. No. Right, new get push, star up keg. .NET Core does not support using an encrypted API key. Using an API key is currently not supported because it required libraries for encrypting the key are not available. Sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> I would suggest using the new gets two star task to push. So add task package new get. And call it directly from the command line. No. So let's try changing that up. Can I see the command in the log? No. Okay. Uh, so is there NuGet? Yeah, push NuGet packages. Fantastic. So then let me grab here that NuGet not restore publish. Change this to push. Wow. I just want that I don't care about symbols uh, external NuGet server pull this down that one advanced what's under advanced that looks like it should work let me remove this one let's see if that can work right I feel like that's the right way to go I don't want to see the command um, da -da 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 -da. release go And we do need to grab that build number, otherwise that release is going to look funky. All right, waiting for the agent. Open Swan, thank you for the follow. 
Yeah, Hugo, I like seeing verbosity as a checkbox that I can turn on and say, tell me more information. That feels like the right thing to do. Download a drop. Good start. Ooh, found a new get. Oh, uh, uh, uh. I think we got it, friends. What's the warning? That's what it was. Try that again. So close. Positive progress. I'm a positive person, except for when I'm spitting raspberries into my mic. Here we go. Come on. Come on. I agree, Todd. It was positive. Very positive. Very, very positive. Come on. I'm feeling good about this. Learning a lot about packaging and deploying C Sharp projects. Uh, thank you, Thomas. I'm, I'm glad you're joining us here. Um, I feel like I take, take, I take two step forwards and two steps back. We're getting there. We're getting there. Build artifacts. Here we go. Download those. The top. 248, waiting for console. Found the tool. <gasps> Set API key. API key was saved. Push. It's not listed yet. It's there. It's there. We did it. We got it. This is happy music. Okay, that's enough of it. Um, we got it. All right. So it's not visible yet. It's still being indexed. I'm going to post the link. Let's go right to the top. Notice none of the package description. These other things are Thomas Rayner. Thanks so much for the subscription. Um, let me share the link to that. So there is where you'll find the library once it's indexed by NuGet. Replicated out to all the uh, endpoint servers there. I'm thrilled. Now, now we've got something. We have a release pipeline that'll publish. When we do a build against that, we, we push something into the master, that right into that master uh, branch. It'll do the release. I think we need to capture the version number in our release. Is there a way for us to do that real quick? Right? Uh, that was release six. Let's see if we can edit and let's see if we can capture the build version number. Latest build. So does that become a variable for me? Link variable group. Uh, uh. No. That's not a thing. Predefined variables. Yes. Default variables. Is build number in here? Agent? No. It is a predefined variable. Yeah. Uh, okay. The build number or the commit identifier. Build number. Build dot build number. Yeah. Right? I should be able to grab that. So if I come back over here, 
right? So if that's predefined and available to me, right? Then I should be able to go back over here and shouldn't I be able to, right? Shouldn't it be picking up the release number? Right, it's um, developer's garage. It hasn't been made public yet. It hasn't been published yet. It's still waiting to be made available. Um, right, but I feel like there's, right, we should set the version number or something. Use Python, no. Right, these are build type things. How do I set the version number on the pipeline so it matches? Right? So give it a give it a few minutes and, and that right this will appear. Right, once it uh may take up to an hour, you know, whatever. Uh, options, general, integrations, release name format. Well, instead of that, use predefined variables to generate unique release names. So I'm not sure what rev colon R is, but if I do that, right? So go back over here. Uh -oh. I don't like that name. Can I, can I change that name? I want to change that name. Uh, publish stream deck tools to NuGet. Because eventually we'll have a second task here to publish the template as a, as a separate step to run, and it'll run them both at the same time. Right? I'm going to take off my need for approval here. Now that it has that branch filter on here, I'm okay with that. Release, there it is. Now the release has the correct number on it and it's off and running. I typed public instead of publish. I typed public where? I need the whoop 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 from Price is Right when someone gets a showcase showdown spot on. Ooh, that'd be fun. That would be fun. So this should actually have the same version number and kind of collide. Maybe NuGet will be a little upset, but I'm not. Wow! Package ID already exists and cannot be modified. Okay. So I kind of expected that, but it numbered it correctly and, and it, it failed properly? Yeah, NuGet got upset. <laughs> NuGet, NuGet got real upset. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. I think, I think we're in a pretty cool place. Let me go back to the build. So this was from when we did the merge from Admiral Snyder. I want to have this also trigger and run, do continuous integration. Um include, I want it to run on all branches. Can I tell it run on all branches? It should by default, shouldn't it? It's live? It's live? Um, status listed. Package has been listed. It may take several hours to propagate through. Fantastic. And it's got a dependency. Yeah. Woohoo! Conan, 9287. Thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate the follow. Uh, less than one download a day. I know. How can that be? Inconceivable. All right. Um, so this should run for everything. Um, I don't want to save in queue just yet. Let me go back to tasks. Um, because build, it goes into stream deck lib and builds the project. Okay. So that's for building the library. Okay. And then it packages the library. 
Okay. Pack options, and then... And then puts together the drop. I think we're... I, I'm concerned... Yeah, here it is. When I do that merge, there's going to be a source folder here. So, you know what I could do? I could put star star slash here. Right, and that should... Or I could do star star slash like that. If I save and queue that, it should run all the way through and actually publish all the way out to NuGet. I can use the wild cards ah, on the triggers. Do it like that. So I don't want to queue one, but I want to merge. So let's try this, right? Um, I'm going to go up to builds. I'm going to put this on one side. Collapse up that up. Open a new browser. Put that over here. Uh, this is... Yes, we're good there. Let me go to GitHub. C Sharp Fritz. Uh, stream. Deck tools. Oh, you make me sad. No. What? Stream Deck Toolkit. I'm going to remember the name of this project at some point. Uh, let's create a new pull request and let's merge feature lib. Can't automatically merge. Why not? refactored folder layout and then it's ugh. Um, refactored layout call it that and then I'm going to need to do this by hand oh yeah look at all that maybe not um all right Notice it's not, it didn't trigger the build here either. Maybe it's because it couldn't merge it. You have no audio. Can anyone link to the GitHub org with the library? It is the, sure. There it is. I should put an entry in the readme for the build over here. Let me grab that build. Where is it? this status badge um, add a readme uh, I'll just put that for it being built and then I should be able to go look at the releases um, edit Options. And then I should also be able to go to, uh, what's the name of the badges, right? Build badges or something like that. Right, I can't remember. Visual badges, no, no. I can't remember the name of it. Shields.io. There it is. Um, search for NuGet. There we go. Oh, wow. Package name. Ooh. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So my package name is uh, Stream Deck Lib, right? Style flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Package not found. Huh? No, I thought we just published this. There it is. So I copy that, and if I go... Don't I have to put a thing around this? Yeah, that's not how they work. 
right? When I want the badge. Come here, you. Right? Don't you have to wrap it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Preview, we should, no. No, I want those to be, right? Markdown image. Images. Alt text path two. Ah, we had it backwards. No, wait, where did it? Uh, da, da, da. Should be like this. Still package not found. That's weird. Deployment felt right. Um, but it's... Alright. Created readme. Sure, commit that. And so it should actually go and do a publish all the way up. Right? because I just made a commit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pipelines stink right now. Down here, builds. Cool, fantastic. We've got it. We've got it. I am thrilled with where we are on this. This is great. So there goes the build, and we should see a release kickoff as well and get that published out. It's kind of weird that I have to jump from one screen to another to kind of follow it out, but hey, whatever. Pack. Oh, it, it skipped the drop. Interesting. Oh, oh, there it went. And then we should be able to check the release and see the release kickoff. Right? We should see the release kickoff. waiting to see that release but this is terrific we've we've come a long way here so we merged in some changes to our stream deck tools we now have our library published so that it's available out there i don't think i have it set as a manual release i have it set right now to do a continuous deployment when we have a build on master so it should run this should pick up and launch yeah, waiting for the build, I know. There it goes. Publishing now. And now, going forward, as we collaborate, as we work together on this project, things that we release and we push into the master branch will automatically be sent out there to NuGet. We have to do a little bit of work here, I think, to, to mark things as preview releases, but I'm, I'm pretty happy here so far. We can do some further tuning so that we actually generate the release object inside of github as well this has been a tremendous stream here today we made a thing that's right hugo we made a thing it's amazing today i am so happy and we're going to be able to iterate and work on this faster and faster as we go through and we continue building on this project um let's see what we can raid here today i want to connect some folks and see if we can uh share with another streamer what's going on here today oh my gosh mario you're running out of steam on me there we go thank you mario uh you know what it looks like code rushed is ready to go and is currently streaming so let's rate our friend mark miller who's off and running here um if you're interested in hanging out and joining mark who's going to be writing he's, he's been working on a game engine here for a little bit Check him out. Robert Tables will be streaming later today. 
You don't have to do a thing. You can sit right back and we'll send you right over to Mark. Thanks so much to Brady Gaster for joining me earlier today. Thank you, chat room, for joining us and helping with the pair of programming today. And thank you to everybody who started contributing to the Stream Deck Toolkit here. Look at that. We got a pull request sitting out here also. That's the one I'm working on. Um, say hi to, my, to Mark for me. Drop a couple .NET bots in there. Thanks so much for all the cheers today. I'll be back on Thursday. Thursday, my guest will be Julie Lerman. And we're going to be talking about serverless and Cosmos DB. Probably not talking about Elgato Stream Deck, but definitely some of those Azure features. Check the events tab up top so you can click and get that reminder. Otherwise, I'll see you Thursday. Take care, everybody. And uh, be good to each other. So yeah. <laughs>